Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthy Hong Kong. Continuing from our first video on free tools to assess your anti-aging progress, this is the second video in our measuring tool series. In this video we would like to share the free apps we are using to help us to track and improve our mental well-being on a daily basis. Most of them have scientific papers to back them up which we have linked to in the description. We will briefly introduce the science behind each one. First of all, we would like to mention that taking N-Man and resveratrol is one of the pillars of improving our overall well-being and extending our healthy lifespan. On the top of this, we also try to eat healthier, exercise more effectively, improve our mindset and cognitive function and sleep better. As Dr. David Sinclair said, taking N-Man does not mean you can sit on the couch and do nothing. For mental well-being, first let's look at one of the claimed benefits of taking NMN, which is improving cognitive function. So far, there has been only one completed human trial for NMN, which was testing for safety only. In this mouse study, however, a research team including Dr. Sinclair showed that NMN supplementation rescues cerebro-microvascular endothelial function and neurovascular coupling responses and improves cognitive function in aged mice. That is a bit of a mouthful, but what it is showing is that NMN supplementation was shown to improve blood flow in the brain, which is a key requirement for healthy brain functioning. Secondly, as we know, NMN is an NAD precursor, and NAD plays an important role in maintaining healthy metabolic function and protects the brain from damaging oxidative stress. It is also critical for sleep as NAD contributes to the regulation of circadian rhythms and sleep-wake cycles, as discussed in these two papers. Personally, my wife and I do feel more energetic, more mentally focused and clear, and sleep better after supplementation with NMN and resveratrol. We're using a few free apps to track and improve our overall well-being from the time we wake up until we go to bed. In this video, we will introduce the apps and then how to use them, and finally we will share our feeling and progress data for each app. There are three apps we would like to share in this video. First, we are using Duolenback for tracking and improving our cognitive function. This is a game where you need to keep track of a series of letters and squares on a 3x3 grid. As shown visually on this slide, the letters are spoken in a random order and the squares on the grid are lit up in a random order as well. You need to identify letters and squares that appeared n spaces back in the sequence. So for example, if n is 2, when the same letter is spoken or the same square lit up, that happened two goes ago, then you have a match and you press a button to identify this. The game is designed to improve working memory and focus. We use a free version on our phones which you can see in this screenshot. This comes with a tutorial to help you get started. There are also free versions available on the web or as applications for Windows, Mac and Linux. Here is the one on my Linux machine. To achieve the best result, the recommendation is to do at least 20 minutes each day, which is around 20 games, to do it at least 5 days a week, and to continue for 20 days, which comes to about 1 month. Whether we can train our basic cognitive ability, and if so how, has been a subject of study for many years. A study released in 2008 by Dr. Suzanne Jagi titled Improving Fluid Intelligence with Training on Working Memory, looked at using the dual and back game as a tool. The study found that it was possible to improve elements of general cognitive ability beyond the specific skills needed to play the game. We can see her comments after the study. What interests us most, however, is the dramatic improvement on tests of GF in trained groups. Here, GF is fluid intelligence, which is the ability to solve novel reasoning problems and is correlated with a number of important skills such as comprehension, problem solving and learning. Further down in the study, she says, it's important to note that the gain in GF is strictly training related and is not due to pre-existing differences in intelligence or working memory, which says that we can improve our cognitive ability through such training. Another more recent study, done in 2017 from the John Hopkins University, also looked at Joule and Back as a way of training the brain. This study not only looked at the results in terms of tests, 
but also included EEG scans of brain activity. According to the study, playing Joule and Back over the month of the study period showed a 30% improvement in working memory and significant changes in the brain activity in the prefrontal cortex, the critical region responsible for higher learning. Here we can see the EEG scans with the areas of increased activity highlighted in red. The group that played Joule and Back is on the right. It must be said there have been other studies done on Joule and Back as a tool for improving cognitive ability and the results have been mixed. Joule and Back was quite difficult at the beginning as you need to memorize the letter you are hearing plus the square that is highlighted at the same time. My wife and I both enjoyed playing the game. It helps our focus and attention. First we made effort to complete 20 games in the morning. Later we found that playing Joule and Back before sleep helped increase our sleep quality so now we are doing 10 in the morning and 10 in the evening. We do find playing in the evening calms our mind and makes us feel sleepy. We both also found it helps us dream better, less annoying and bad dreams. Interestingly, Dave Asprey, CEO of Bulletproof, also felt that it improved his sleep and especially increased REM sleep. We do continue to play the game in the morning when our minds are clearer as we tend to get better results. I'm gradually building up and have reached level eight. My average is about 6.5. My wife has reached level 11 and her average is 7.5. Getting a good night's sleep is really important for your health and longevity. And one way that this can be interrupted is if you have too much blue light in the evening before going to bed, as blue light is associated with the sun in the morning and at midday. Too much of it in the evening interrupts the process of winding down in your body. One of the main culprits in pushing too much blue light into your eyes is electronic devices, especially phones and computers. Here is the abstract from a study published in the Journal of Psychiatric Research investigating the effects of blue light, which says the use of light emitting electronic devices before bedtime may contribute to or exacerbate sleep problems. Exposure to blue wavelength light, in particular from these devices, may affect sleep by suppressing melatonin and causing neurophysiological arousal. Here is a study that specifically looked at handheld devices emitting blue light and what could be done to mitigate the effects. They identified two ways. One is to use tinted glasses and the other is to use a sleep aware app that changes color of your screen to emit less short wavelength blue light. We can see that the study concluded that both the orange tinted glasses and the sleep aware app significantly reduced short wavelength emissions. The apps all work in similar ways by mimicking the light you get from the sun at different times of the day so that your melatonin production stays in its natural circadian rhythm. We use a number of these on our various devices. We are using Flux on Windows and Twilight for our Android mobile devices, both of which adjust the color of the screen over the course of the day. Apple devices, both iOS and Mac, have a feature called Night Shift that has a similar function. And I've included Redshift for those of you using Linux. We use sleep aware apps all the time as it's more restful on the eyes and we do feel less strain over the day. As mentioned, sleep is important for your health and longevity. Sleep has four stages. Stage one is light sleep. Stage two and three are deep sleep. And the fourth stage is REM, rapid eye movement sleep, which is when we do our dreaming. We go through a number of these cycles in a night and the average sleep wake cycle is about 90 minutes. We are told we should get about eight hours sleep a night, but it is not only the time that you spend asleep that matters, it is also the quality of the sleep. So it is always good to track how you are sleeping. We use a free app called Sleep Cycle which allows you to do this with only your smartphone and at no additional cost. The app tracks your sleep and provides a graph of how much of each kind of sleep you got, as well as giving you a score for how well you slept. It can track sleep movement and even record your snoring. It also has a feature that wakes you up during your lightest sleep phase. So my wife and I usually set half an hour window for waking up. The alarm will go off during the lightest sleep phase making your waking process more natural. It's free to have all basic functions, but if you need more detailed analysis, then you need to upgrade to the paid version. 
We set our phones to flight mode and turn our Wi-Fi off when we go to bed and place our phones on the bedside tables. We cannot say the app is 100% accurate on the estimation of our sleep quality, but it is valuable to record when we go to bed and when we wake up every day, and it gives us our average total sleep hours as well. After a certain period of time, we can figure out what is the best pattern for us. Going to bed before 10 p.m. and getting at least eight hours sleep seems to be our best pattern so far. We have found that our energy drops significantly and we feel tired in the morning when we go to bed after 11 p.m. According to the app, my sleep has improved after taking NMN and resveratrol. When I started, I was averaging around 70%. Now my average is 85%. My wife doesn't feel much difference. Her data fluctuates. She reached 100% perfect at one time, but sometimes she can be 60%. Her average is around 84%. So for our mental well-being, these are some of the free tools helping us track and improve our performance during our anti-aging journey. For meditation, we listen to the six-phase meditation from Vishen Lakiani of Mind Valley before bed. We find that it is calming and relaxing. I'm sure many of you have different apps for assessing and helping you to manage your mental well-being as well. Please share in the comments below. Our audience and we are very interested in hearing about them. We hope that you found this video informative please do give us a thumbs up as it will encourage us to continue to produce videos about extending healthy lifespan. We will make more videos sharing our tools later. Please do subscribe and hit the bell button for further notifications. I wish you all well and I will speak to you again soon.